Okay, welcome back. This is 30 seconds after uh, I finished recording the last video. Uh, it's just too nice to, to really go back inside. Uh, so, uh, what are we doing today? Uh, well, we're going to be going over uh, the gradient descent method uh, for numerical analysis. So we're going to be coding it up. We've already demonstrated that it converges, uh, the convergence, uh, at least for having convex functions. And, um, and, and so uh, we would like to see uh, this sort of thing in action. And so, uh, so this is the one thing that we've done that's sort of multivariate, uh, because it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to talk about anything that's like, talk about the gradient of just a single variable function, because that's just the derivative. And so, um, so yeah, so uh, in order to, uh, so yeah, so that's what we're doing today. And I guess, uh, yeah, so we're just gonna jump into it. Uh, you don't need to hear me blabbering about it uh, for too long. Uh, you'll hear me jabbering about it plenty uh, while we're actually coding it up. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and jump in and, um, and I'll see you when I'm back indoors. All right, uh, so uh, third lecture in a row in like a couple hours. Uh, so this is uh, going ahead and coding up uh, the gradient descent method. Um, this is going to be a really simple example of how to use it. Uh, we're going to take a look at, say, more or less a paraboloid and, uh, and talk about how we can, in, in two dimensions, and then we're going to look at uh, how the gradient descent sort of navigates through that. Uh, I'm going to be using only a fixed point uh, method for, uh, sorry, a fixed time step or a fixed step size for the gradient descent method. And, uh, and yeah. Um, yeah, should be easy enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in there and uh, and code it up. Should only take a few minutes. Okay, so uh, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna, we need to first have an objective function, uh, which is the function we are trying to minimize. Uh, and so with the objective function, uh, here it's going to be a function of two variables, x and y. And this is going to be uh, a paraboloid. So I'm going to say x minus 5 uh, squared uh, plus uh, y uh, plus 1 uh, squared. Uh, and so in this case, uh, we have a minimum point uh, at uh, the point 5 comma negative 1, right? And so, uh, so that's what we're hoping we're going to find using the gradient descent method. But first, we need to take a gradient. So, uh, so I'm going to say grad f, and this is going to be, again, a function of x and y. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's going to be a ve uh, you know, some sort of vector. And generally speaking, when we think about gradients, they're row vectors. Uh, and that's intuition that we got from uh, calculus 3. And the, the reason why is that it actually uh, plays nicely with uh, chain rules and things like that for higher order uh, functions. And so, uh, so I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Uh, there are some... There's some literature that will go for column vectors, but really it's just the transpose of anything. Um, yeah, right? That's what I want to do. I think that's what I want to do. You know, I just said that, but now I'm thinking like, I, if I'm going to be trading each of my X and Y points as column vectors, then I am going to have some issues. And so, uh, so I'm going to add these together and, and evaluate them. I, yeah, I'm going to have other problems. And I, I realize there's other other issues uh, coming up in here, and, and let's let's go ahead and talk about them. So basically, I'm going to try to be feeding in a vector inside of y, and I could in, you know do it entry wise. And so I, I so I, I can say f of x1 comma x2, or I can just say f of x, where x is a column vector of x1 and x2. So uh, so me and my big mouth, I started talking uh, before really thinking, and so um, so in order to change this from being a, you know explicitly listed as two different variables, I'm going to have, I, I'm just going to have, put one variable in there, I'm going to pull the first two entries out of it, and if, if, and that's going to be just the same thing as long as x is, um, yeah, uh, a, a vector, a column vector. And so again, we're going to be doing the same thing here, uh, and now, uh, now let's take the gradient. So here, uh, we're going to have uh, the gradient is going to be the derivative with respect to the first variable, uh, and since uh, these are sort of separated, uh, it's easy enough to do. Uh, x, so we have 2 times x1 minus 5 there, 
and, um, and I'm actually going to make this column vector so I can add it back to my uh, column vector for x. Uh, and so uh, scratch everything I said before. So 2 times uh, x of 2 uh, plus 1. All right, and that's my gradient. All right, and you can notice that the gradient is going to be 0 uh, when it, x1 is 5 and x2 is negative 1, right? Which matches exactly with that minimum point. All right, so, uh, so we're going to need to start with initial guess. And so you can pick anything you want. Uh, it just needs to be a column vector. So I'm going to say uh, uh, 2, uh, 3. Uh, it doesn't matter. And, uh, and yeah. Um, so now let's see. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say iterations uh, equals, uh, you know, 50. And I'm going to say my uh, step size is 0 0.01. Um, now uh, we go ahead and run a loop. Uh, so for i is equal to 1 up to iterations, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, no semicolon there. I'm going to say um, my next guess is going to be uh, my last next guess. Remember, this is a recursive thing. Um, and I, I'm going to, I, let's see, we want to go into negative the gradient direction. So it's going to be minus grad f of next guess. And, uh, and now I need to have in here, I, I need to have my step size. So step size, boom. There we go. Uh, so, uh, so that's going to move us in the direction of the negative gradient. Uh, now let's go ahead and record these things. Uh, so I'm going to say, uh, uh, so record uh, uh, guesses and uh, start this off with just our initial guess. And now I'm going to uh, record guesses. Uh, now remember, uh, each one of these guesses is a column vector. And so I'm going to say uh, it's going to be the this matrix. And now we're going to add on uh, the next guess. There we go. And so semicolon, there we go. And and there we go, we're done. Uh, and so we can uh, go ahead and display uh, error of, of, you know, error, or say distance from the point, uh, from the minimum, from the minimum. And uh, so I'm going to display, I say, um, the norm of the difference between, I uh, say, 5 semicolon negative 1 uh, minus uh, our, our, where we ended. So next guess. And, uh, and that should give it. So let's see. Boop. Uh, and so we have a problem. Uh, and so. Uh, undefined variable or function next guess. I uh, and so we need we need to initialize it. So I'm gonna say next guess. Uh, initial guess. There. You go. So there you go. Putting in there. And distance from a point is a full one value away. I uh, let's see. So let's increase our iterations up to uh, one or say two hundred. Right. So we go. All right. So now we're 0.08 away. Uh, let's increase it to two uh, to say one thousand, uh, and it says e to the minus nine. So good, we're getting really really close. So uh, so that ended up being pretty good. Uh, it's way too many iterations though. You don't want to have to do that many. Uh, let's go back to doing five iterations and increase the step size. Uh, boom. So here uh, before when we first tried it, we were at one point eight distance away, and now we're one point six. So it actually improved things a little bit. And if I go up to say 30, 20 iterations, uh, yeah, we get pretty good. Uh, 1 20th away. Uh, but you know, this isn't really that satisfying. Let's see I, a plot. So let's go ahead and plot. I, we're gonna have our recorded guesses. I, and I'm gonna take a look at, I uh, see it's gonna be the first row uh, I want everything out of there, and I'm going to have record guesses, uh, second row here, and I'm going to plot those guys. And how do I want them to look? 
uh, let's go ahead and make them red circles. All right? Uh, so again, figure here and uh, and let's see. Um, yeah, and then finally, I'm gonna plot uh, the last about point. Uh, so it's gonna be plot uh, five and negative one, and we're gonna just call this a blue triangle. Okay, so I'm gonna push play and see what we get. Doop. Uh, I got my blue triangle. Uh, I don't see my red guys. That's alarming. Uh, did they not make it? Oh, I forgot to put hold on. There we go. Hold on. And now hold off. And when I do that, boop, we see we, we descend very, uh, you know, very apparently all the way down. What's interesting is that uh, we can see that you know these points are actually getting tighter and tighter as we get closer, and that's because the gradient itself is getting smaller. So the step size isn't just about like how large of a step you take in that direction, but it's going to be a proportional thing to the gradient itself. And so as the gradient get decreases in size, we see that the, step, the actual distance between two guesses is decreasing. And if I, I take iterations up to say 100, I and push play. But we see that they sort of keep going and keep going and keep going and get closer and closer and closer and closer and this like little comet flying out of here. And I guess so here this is a really really small error, 0 0.09, which is fantastic. And, uh, and yeah, so that's uh, the really standard uh, gradient descent technique. Uh, not too bad and, uh, and I coded that up in like 10 minutes. Um, so I you can go ahead and I, I guess we can pick other points just for for fun, but it's not going to look all that different. Uh, say negative one one, and push play, and yeah, it's same same sort of difference. Uh, I'd say negative one negative one come from a different angle. All right, uh, yeah, so that is uh, horizontally collinear with uh, uh, the point itself, so it just goes that way. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's it. Uh, but notice uh, for this equation. Uh, the gradient descent method works really, really fast. Uh, this is one of those nice situations where you actually have access to the derivative of the function and it's actually not that complicated. Um, so I, this sort of thing comes up a lot when you talk about machine learning and things like that, training weights, uh, and uh, those often are quadratic uh, things to minimize. And so, um, so yeah. I, other places where it comes up, uh, deep learning uh, sort of comes up, but there you're training uh, sort of uh, what they call ReLU uh, functions, which are uh, sort of these piecewise linear uh, things. And that's sort of the power, of, where the power comes from with deep learning is that it's a, whole, it's a piecewise uh, linear approximation of functions that you're trying to work out and you need to figure out the weights on each of those uh, linear pieces. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's what we got. And um, yeah, uh, pretty simple. Uh, and uh, next time uh, I go into this, I can talk about something like the Nastroff method, but that might wait until the proper end of this class. Uh, I just want you to have uh, sort of under your belt seeing exactly how this method works. And you can see it only took a couple minutes to code up. All right, so I'm gonna stop here and um, yeah, I uh, wish you uh, happy holidays. All right, uh, I'll see you next time. It's really almost a shame to go back indoors. Uh, and code. I haven't actually coded yet, but I'm recording this end, end sequence uh, for uh, for the video for you guys. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the gradient descent method is a pretty good way to go uh, as far as uh, finding the optimal point. It is sort of the, the modal uh, first order method that people do to uh, finding uh, the extremums of a, of a function. Uh, there are other ways to go about it, and, um, and there are better implementations of um, gradient descent methods. Uh, one really big one is the Nastrov method, um, which I think actually wasn't even geometrically motivated. It was sort of like they sort of stumbled upon like the best possible first order gradient descent method that you can do. Uh, so when I say this, I mean like the, the things that you can adjust for gradient descent are like the step sizes. Um, so we just did like constant step sizes, but there are line search methods, there are other things. Uh, sometimes uh, people will parameterize the, the function and then just do sort of uh, uh, a Newton's type method or something to, to find the root. Uh, and so there's a lot of uh, a lot of ways to go about that. Um, but yeah, uh, the 
but in, in this case, uh, I just want to give you the, the basic 101 version of gradient descent. Uh, we proved that it converges, provided that you choose a small enough step size, and um, and yeah, uh, that that that's what we're doing. Uh, and I guess uh, thanks for watching, and um, and I'll see you next time.